Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to give you some information about something that's recently been in the news the last few days, and that's about a celiac vaccine that was developed by Dr. Anderson. He's out of Australia. He's been working on this for several years. I had the pleasure of speaking with him a little over two years ago, and he was telling me about his research at the time. Uh, just last week, he uh, did a video on, on YouTube talking about the results of his phase one trial. There were uh, 34 people, I believe, in the entire study, 19 of whom received the vaccine itself. And uh, I wanted to just interpret a little bit what it's all about, because if you just read kind of the headline, you see, you know, celiac vaccine, and uh, that makes it sound like you can you can go and get it today. So phase one trials are the very beginning, and uh, what this vaccine, who the vaccine is designed for is very specific. So not only people with celiac disease, but people who have a specific genotype or a particular uh, gene profile, and that is the DQ2 gene, which is the most prevalent. It's estimated to be that 80% of those with uh, celiac disease have this particular gene, the DQ2. So this vaccine would leave out the 20% that don't have that. So it's, it's designed around those majority that have the DQ2. That's number one. Number two, it's an injectable vaccine. So this is not something you would take orally. You would have to inject yourself each week. Um, if everything went perfectly well uh, in the rest of the trials, it's estimated this vaccine would not be available before um, 2017. So we have at least six years, and that's if everything uh, goes uh, pi picture perfect. The science behind this is akin to allergy injections. So if you've ever had allergy shots, what they're trying to do is desensitize your immune system to the problematic agent. In this case, it would be celiac disease. And so your immune system would, would become immune to, um, I'm sorry, gluten, uh, creating celiac disease. So you'd be immune to gluten and stop reacting to it. So that's the science behind it, which is great. But practically, uh, where does that leave us? In this study, um, what they talked about for those 19 people that uh, re received the vaccine, many of them, and they didn't state the actual number that I saw, but uh, many suffered gastrointestinal complaints. They didn't specify exactly what they were. Uh, one person opted out of the study because they were so severe, uh, but what the rest experienced were gastrointestinal complaints similar to when they ingested gluten. So if you have celiac or you're uh, gluten sensitive, you know how you feel uh, when you ingest gluten, and that's how these individuals felt. Uh, four of them, uh, sorry, seven of them suffered from nausea. Uh, two actually threw up. Uh, two took medication because of it. So four out of the seven was pretty severe, but there were seven total out of the 19 that suffered uh, from nausea. And uh, only four of them, uh, of the 19, actually generated this immune response. It was in the T cells, which are part of your immune system. But the response they were looking for, uh, four people generated that in their blood, which I figured out is a 21% success rate, which didn't sound great to me, but... Um, you know, if you're looking at someone doing a job and they and they do it correctly 21% of the time, obviously that means 79% of the time they're not doing it correctly. But uh, in the arena of, of drugs, that efficacy showing in a study is, is a lot lower than you'd expect. So the researchers considered it it a success, their phase one trial. So that's good for the science aspect of it. But as a clinician uh, looking at, at patients, uh, we're looking at 21% at this point had the reaction they were looking for. Much greater than that had gastrointestinal complaints. Uh, they had nausea. Once again, this is just for celiacs, only with those with this particular uh, genotype, that DQ2 gene. Uh, this is this doesn't address gluten sensitivity at all. So for those people, um, this would not be any sort of viable alternative. So we kind of have our good news and our bad news here. Um, 2017 is considered the earliest uh, 
time that we might see this on the market, and that's if everything goes uh, exactly according to plan. So I just wanted to put in perspective for you the uh, facts about this study, and so you could kind of know where it might fit into your future. And hopefully it does. Uh, even, I mean, if it's only dealing with people with the DQ2 gene, yet it, yet it does its job, that would be very exciting. Uh, but we're not there yet. This is only phase one trials. There's a lot more uh, work to be done. But uh, as I said, I just wanted to give you perspective on what it all meant as of right now. So I hope this was helpful and informative. And until next time, I wish you very good health.